thought jump too fast, too strong, too aggressive, too smart, too, too powerful, everything. The full work movement. What I win, world number one, mandatory, Lopez. You know what it is now, let's do it down under. Big crowd, let's get on, two warriors, two lions. Let's go to war. You've been matched well, you've taken the right fights at the right time. Would you be happy to go straight in with Tiafimo Lopez now? Absolutely, let's do it. I want, I want the fight, I've been saying, I want the fight since he won the fight. I want that fight. Man, it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive achievement, but there's so much more to go. I've got more work to do, and that's the fight I want next. Unified title shot. Just finally, you're a proud Australian, proud Greek. You've got friends and family all over the world. You're a dedicated professional. We haven't seen your family for a number of weeks. You got a message for everyone? Listen, I'm a proud Australian. When I said that yesterday at the press conference, I said, I train overseas. That's why I'm not an Australian class fighter. But I represent Australia with all my heart. I represent all the Greeks. I know we're going for a bit of you know, hard problems at the moment, but I represent all the Greeks, all the Aussies. This was for you guys, for my family, for my two kids, for my partner, for all, my whole family, my dad, everybody, man, my team. This is a great moment. I'm, I'm just, uh, I want to let it sink in, but I'm so happy, man. Make, sure you, make sure you enjoy it. Well done. Well done, one, but I'm going to go train tonight. I promise you I'll train tonight because I want that. I want that, that world title. I'm coming. This is 19 and 0, currently 19 and 0, with 10 kills, 27 year old George Kembosos Jr. of Australia. This was just a little over a week ago about a week and seven days uh eight hours or so ago when he defeated lee selby to become the mandatory 135 pound lightweight contender for current i have a hard time saying undisputed but we're going to say undisputed champion tiafimo lopez who defeated lomachenko just a couple of weeks excuse me actually yeah a couple of weeks before that I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Got my colleague Big J on the phone. And what we're going to talk about is this. Now that Devin Haney has defeated Yurkis Gamboa over on the zone via disappointing unanimous decision, social media is ablaze because you have Tiafimo Lopez overcoming the odds and defeated, defeating Vasil Lomachenko. That was considered an upset. Set the boxing world on fire. Three million plus um viewers and that's the low end on es plain pn i believe it was close to four million correct me if i'm wrong the biggest viewed event on espn or in boxing since what pacquiao fought um jeff horn and when errol spence fought leonard bundu that was leading in from the nba um, um olympic finals so that had to be mentioned the point is, this guy is in a very, very good situation career-wise. The problem is, he doesn't look that good. He doesn't look like he can beat. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be fair. When we look here, let me pull up the rankings here. When you look at the top dogs right now, and it's a, um, um, in about a week or so, I'm going to go back to using my rankings on my website again, FightView360.com. Link down below in the description box where you'll be able to see. I keep them color coded. So you would know who the mandatories is, the number one contenders, you know, world champions, all the belts, all the bullshit. So right now, the main players at the top of the 135 pound division, we're only talking about 135, are Tiafimo Lopez, Devin Haney. Actually, let's do it in order, in my opinion. Tiafimo Lopez, Tank Davis, Lomachenko. Devin Haney. You have Luke Campbell, Ryan Garcia. They're fighting on December the 5th to be the mandatory, by the way, for um, Devin Haney. And then you have guys like George Cambosos, Robert Easter, Yvonne Mindy, Roly Romero, Jorge Linares, even Richard Comey. So when you look at where George Kambosos is, before we bring bring Big J in, when you look at where he is, how does he match up against those guys? And how confident are you from what you've seen from him that he can upset the Apple card at 135 pounds? Because he is the IBF mandatory once again, and his spot means that he will get his shot. Of all the sanctioning bodies, WBC, WBA, WBO, the IBF will make sure you get your shot. So it's looking like right now, that if Tiafimo Lopez doesn't fight him, 
then Tiafimo Lopez will likely vacate his belt. We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But the money is at 135 pounds. So, um, Big J, what's your thoughts right now on George Kimbosos? Does he defeat, you know, any of the top three guys at 135 pounds? Or how do you feel he competes against those guys? Well, I'm going to be very frank, mate. Yeah, good day to you. How you going? I hope everything's well over there. Um, I don't see George defeating... Based on George's uh, performance against Lee Selby, as I said in the previous video, he needed to win by a knockout. Yeah. And he won by a split decision. And it wasn't that impressive. I mean... Yeah, we talked about it. He needed to put on a statement. You know, something like Devin Haney needed to do tonight. He needed to put on a statement to, you know, like nobody's talking about George Cambosos. Like his name should be in the mix right now with the social media chatter. With the Tank Davis, you know, and 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 the Devin Haney. Nobody's talking about him. Well, I think because what Tank Davis did to Leo Cantabru uh Santa Leo Cruz. Santa Cruz took his head off. Yeah. So I mean, that wasn't that was the statement that Selby, uh, that George Cambosis Jr. needed to make against Selby, and he won a split decision. Okay, yeah, the cards were garbage. 118, 110, what fight were they watching? 115, 114, biased towards Selby. 116, 112, pretty much spot on. Eight yeah, that, that's my, that was my card. That was my card too. So, Selby, and what was that What was that two-minute two minute round in the eight? Because yeah, people did bring that up. Cambosis rocked him. Rocked him, patted him in trouble, and they stopped it. What was that? Yeah. That was, that, that, that was oh, well. And, and you know what? That 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 hasn't been brought up, you know, in media a lot, too. You know, I need to go back and actually um, watch well, that fight again did, and, and clip that out. I, I think because it hasn't had an effect on the fight because George Kambosis won. If he lost, there would be an uproar. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. I think, I think that kind of got swept under the rug, but that... That round was stopped a full minute early, which was yeah. garbage. But that's and it was his best round. Point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to your question, I don't see George beating Lopez. He's not powerful enough to beat Lopez. So and, uh, I see. I see. And Tank. I mean, I don't. I don't see him. Devin Haney. He'd probably beat. Actually, I think I'm very confident he'd beat Devin Haney based on his performance today. Mm. But Tiafimo Lopez. No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I know that's hard to say because I should be back in the Aussie boy, but I got. No, nah, well, you know, you know but that's the thing. Line. You know, we can, you could, you can back him, and we can back him. You know, you know, our countrymen, and we can wish the best on him. But in this world we live in, and and with the the service we have to provide, we got to call that shit like it is. You know. Well, like, yeah, I see him getting, I see him getting knocked out inside of five. You rounds. know, we we the, we said in our fight week preview that you know, and, and we weren't the only ones that we. He did have to show that he had to show us something. That Lee and Selby Cambosos fight was very important. A lot of eyes were on that fight, and then they turned off and said, "All right, he's not going to beat Lopez." No statement was made. No, that's right. No statement was made. But the one thing that George has got going for him is that you can have a massive, massive crowd in Australia because the restrictions are over now. There's, well, but I think Victoria still can't have things, but in New South Wales, his home state. The restrictions are virtually gone. So you can have a multi-million dollar fight with a huge crowd, 60, 70, 80,000 people in ANZ Stadium in Sydney and pack that place out because people will turn up for that, especially if Lopez is he's fighting Lopez for four belts. That's never been that's done. The, that's the incentive. Yeah, that, that, the financial that's incentive the is there. That's the seller. Because in reality, casual boxing fans wouldn't have a clue who George Gambasis Jr. is. They wouldn't have it. They wouldn't. They wouldn't know. Well, they probably would know, but they probably wouldn't know much about Lopez or Australian fighting fight fans. But those belts, the magnitude of it, the magnitude of all those four belts, because the last guy to fight um, for for Australia for the lightweight title was Michael Capsidius, mm -hmm. and he got dropped by um, what was his name? Um, Marquez. Did the Marquez fight? Yeah. Yeah, the Marquez fight. Yeah, and, yeah. So, and that was almost ten years ago. So, if so not more, last, yeah, that was about ten years ago. Yeah, I don't remember. Two thousand eleven was it? Two thousand eleven? Two thousand? Yeah, I don't. I don't Brandon. remember. It was so long ago. Right, it's five time yeah, I first got was, on YouTube. It, yeah, it was, it was within ten years. I watched it again the other day. So, but now the significance of all those belts, 
Paul Barron, Lou DeBella need to get together, bring it out there because that is the biggest money maker and you can have it in prime time TV in, in States because that's Sunday afternoon in Australia. No problem at all. Yeah, well, but is he going to go there? So as we talked about, just to point out, here's the options. Um, if, the, if the IBF does not immediately order sometime in the next couple of months or so for Cambosos and, and Tiafimo to fight, they would do it something like they have to have a deal and they have to fight by March or April. However, it is possible for there to be a step aside agreement, but George Cambosos would have to agree, you know, to you know, to financial compensation. They would throw him however amount of money, you know, to say, okay, well, you step aside, you're going to get your shot next. It may not be against Tiafimo, but you will get your shot here. Take this pretty much. Usually, kind of like a free money. Some fighters, it'll be like, you know, okay, well, here, take this money. You know, free money. Or it'll be like, here, take this money, but also we'll feature you on the undercard of the fight that builds you up to say that you'll fight the winner. Not necessarily meaning you'll get the winner. So there's options right there. So in my opinion, Devin Haney didn't do himself any favors tonight. Um, Cambosos didn't do himself any favors. Tank so, Davis did. Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia versus Luke Campbell at 135 taking place on December the 5th. That's a very important fight because Ryan Garcia has a lot of money behind him. And already, by the way, according to a friend of mine, um, Steve Kim, who just spoke, he was speaking to on Twitter, he had put out that he was speaking to Tiafimo Sr. just a few hours ago. And that they're leaning toward Ryan Garcia. I mean, I forgot, almost forgot to say that. They're leaning toward Ryan Garcia. You know, so yeah, but was, Ryan, Gar Ryan Garcia is going to be the mandatory for uh, Heine. How's that going to work? Because um, Ryan Garcia would be a voluntary. Like if he were to win, nah, he can like he can like say, "Nah, we don't want the Devin Haney fight." You know, we're going to go the other way because nah, you're, you're going after three belts and a status, the franchise status bullshit. You know, compared to well, Devin Haney's one past, and, and uh, less money. He's got to get past all oh, Mike. He's got to get. He's got to get past Luke Campbell, but also there's something political there. Because if you haven't heard, Canelo is no longer with the zone. He's a free agent. So what yeah, that yeah, means? Yeah, so, so, so Ryan Garcia is very important to the zone, financially, fans, subscribers, all of that. It's hard to see him being able to go over to ESPN because that's where it would have to be. To fight like this is it's different now. It's not like he can be linked out. He's important to the zone. They're going to do everything to try to bring Tiafimo over there. So when I say that the Ryan Garcia fight might be hard to make, it might be hard to make for Tiafimo. So right now, you know, like I said, I'm I'm. It's hard to see Cambosos getting his shot unless Tiafimo plans to stay at 135 for at least three fights. And this is a man who's been talking about for quite some time to move into 140, but. They have, him and his father, have acknowledged, and, and his promoter, have acknowledged that 135 is where the money is. You well, know? you think that that's the case. I mean, in, in retrospect, out of all those fights, George Cambosis Jr. is going to be the easiest fight and make him the most money, so why wouldn't he take it? That Well, you but know, but to, but, but to go, oh, yeah, but will they want to go over there? That's the thing. You know, well, if millions, millions of dollars in gate revenue, I think they will, because if they pack out, they get seventy thousand people to um, ANZ Stadium. I did the math the other day. At twenty nine dollars a ticket just to start with, that's one point eight million dollars in fight revenue. That, that's just a gate revenue. That's based on thirty dollars a ticket. Obviously, they'll sell millions in gate revenue alone. Yeah. So, plus you know the TV deals and everything else they'll make. So. They'll make mil they'll probably make five million in gate money alone. So uh, you wouldn't come out to Australia for five million bucks? Yeah, well we're gonna see, man. We're gonna see because, you know, remember they have to make a decision, you know, within the next um, few weeks because they have to let all of the sanctioned bodies know what they're doing. You know, you get all these mandatories, you know, who are going to be knocking on the doors and saying, hey, I'm going to get my shot. What am I going to, you know, Tiafimo Lopez is the money guy and the man at the top of the division. You know, and mm. Devin Haney didn't do himself any favors. And, you know, oh. what about what about George Cambosos versus Devin Haney? You know, yeah, maybe. Question. Now, 
when the Cabosis Jr. beat Selby, who was number one at WBO, is he also now number one at WBO? Nah, it doesn't work like that. You know, no but, okay. um, well, actually, let me see. But you know what? He could be because Ryan Garcia, if, it depends on what happens with Ryan Garcia and um, Luke Campbell. He, yeah, could be, if, um, he could be number two. He could move. If, if, Ryan, if Ryan Garcia or whoever loses, and, well, if, if Gambosis Jr. is going to be mandatory for two belts, you think he's got to get his shot first. So... Yeah, he's getting, he's getting there. He's getting there. He's getting, he's getting there. So, so, yeah. so he's already IBF mandatory, but he will probably yeah. be one fight away from being WBO mandatory too. Yeah, exactly. Weird how that works. Yeah. Well, it all depends on Tiafimo Lopez, but I mean, do does he come out to Australia? Oh, I can't see why not. The most money would be in Australia. Having it prime time Saturday night in the states, it's Sunday afternoon here in Australia. That's that's yeah. easy. I mean, look look at the success of Horn Pacquiao, financially speaking. Yeah, but that's Pacquiao speaking. though. So you know you can't. That's Pacquiao. You know. Yeah. Like yeah, people, true, people will fly know. all over. These these are two, you know, fighters that are that especially to your female. He's good, but he's not a household name. You know. No, he's, and neither is George. And neither is George. Not in Australia. I mean, the casual fit man would never clue who he was. Yeah. So. Like I told you, I didn't really know nothing, and and he says it himself. He says it himself. He doesn't really have a footprint over in Australia, you know. Oh, uh, Cam no, because he trains in the states because yeah. he, he makes the point that he can't get the elite training that he needs through Australia, and he's dead right. I mean, the the two the two most all the sparring and everything. Yeah, well, the two most unsuccessful divisions we have in Australia are the lightweight and the heavyweight. So I'm not surprised he goes overseas because there's just yeah. no talent at those divisions in Australia. Not in, not on international championship scale so yeah. you can't blame him for going overseas because yeah we got nothing we got nothing going on at lightweight or heavyweight so all, right. all the others are okay but yeah so uh closing thoughts well i really hope he does get his title shot but i honestly think uh probably team a team fma will vacate it and george will fight some other bloke for it hopefully in australia for a vacated title but that's the way i see it going i don't, I don't yeah that's I don't what it's know, looking but, like um, by the way, the next mandatory, like if Tiafimo were to vacate, the next person in line would be a fighter by the name of Isak Cruz, who fought on the opener of the Tank Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz pay-per-view. He stopped Diego Magdaleno in brutal fashion with a emphatic first round knockout. It was ugly. Oh, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. You know, so, like uh, he is right with, right? he is with PVC. Oh, he's with PBC. Okay, well, you know, um, cool so basically, cool. and so basically, um, Cambosos and Cruz would be fighting for that vacant title. So that's what it would be. If Tiafimo drops it, that's what it would be. It would be um, Cambosos versus Isak Cruz. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, go ahead. It'd be interesting to see where they put that fight. So They so probably would. They probably would put it over there because... Um, um, I think I think that PBC would go for that to try to put it over in um, Australia. Yeah, 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 but that wouldn't sell out seventy thousand crowd. They might get they might get a twenty five thirty thousand. Yeah, yeah, for a title. That's, yeah. That, that, not one not one title is not going to sell out seventy thousand people. No, no chance. No, yeah. chance. not with two guys you barely know. But, yeah. Yeah. You because know, stadium fights in this country have been huge because everyone knows who they were. Mm. You know. Jeff Fennick and Zuma Nelson. Everyone knew who Jeff Fennick was. Monday in Green, number one. Everyone knew who they were. Born Pacquiao. Do I need to say any more? Yeah. So, uh, right. you need a huge name or a huge draw to sell out a 50,000-seat stadium. So, uh, uh, bring it over here anyway, because, you know, Australia, Australia needs more big fights. So. Well, this is um, T Street Controversy and Big J with FightView360.com. As soon as we get some news on what's going to be happening um, going forward, all of these fighters will be letting you know. Please subscribe.